Next, we're going to talk about how to show that the simple linear ordinary least squares estimators are unbiased estimators of beta naught and beta one respectively. So this is what we want to show. So we have beta naught hat and beta one hat, which we derived not too long ago. We want to show that they're unbiased estimators of beta naught and beta one. And you may recall that I showed you some alternative forms of the estimator for beta one hat. We're going to use this just because it makes our derivations a little bit simpler. We could show it using the one that we derived, but we just take a little bit more time and you get the exact same results. So these are the two estimators we're going to use, and we want to show that they are unbiased. But some of you may be wondering, what exactly does it mean to be unbiased again? So an estimator theta hat is unbiased, an unbiased estimator of theta if the expected value of the estimator equals the value of the target parameter. So in the context of our estimators, we want to show that the expected value of beta 1 hat equals beta 1, and that the expected value of beta naught hat equals beta naught. Uh, and before we do that, let's we're going to do a little bit of preliminary work just to make our lives a little bit simpler. So you may recall that for each individual observation, we have beta naught uh, plus beta 1 xi. And this is true for all n observations. And beta naught is a constant. Actually, I just realized I made a small error here. Actually, I should say a big error. It's very important here. Plus epsilon i, where epsilon is our error. That's actually a very critical detail. Okay, so each observation is beta naught plus beta 1 xi plus the random error. And the only thing that is random in this equation is the error epsilon. So beta naught is a constant, it's unknown. Beta 1 is a constant, but unknown. Xi is a known constant, and then epsilon i is a random variable. And you may recall that we assume that the errors have mean 0. So the expected value of epsilon i is 0. And that's going to allow us to compute the expected value of yi pretty straightforwardly. So this is the expected value of beta naught plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i. And we can split. You may, you may recall that the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected value. So we get the expected value of beta naught plus the expected value of beta 1 xi plus the expected value of epsilon i. But everything in the first part of this equation is a constant, beta naught, beta 1, and xi. And so the expected value of a constant is a constant, and so we just get beta naught plus beta 1 xi. And from what we have assumed about the errors, the expected value of epsilon i is 0. So the expected value of each response is beta naught plus beta 1 xi. And now we're going to derive the expected value of y bar, where y bar is the sum of all the individual observations multiplied by 1 over n. And this 1 over n is a constant, so we can take it on the outside, take it to the outside. And the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected values. So we can read that expectation inside. So the expected value of y bar is 1 over n, the sum of the expected values of the individual observations. And we just derive those, right? So we get 1 over n, the sum of beta naught plus beta 1 xi. And if we apply this sum operator to all the elements here, we're going to get n beta naught over n plus beta naught, or sorry, plus beta 1 times the sum of the x's over n. And so we get beta naught plus beta 1 x bar. So that's the expected value of y bar. And having derived both of those things, that's going to be helpful in what we want to do next. So we want to show that the expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1, and the expected value of beta naught hat equals beta naught. So let's look at the expected value 
of beta 1 hat. That is the expected value of the sum of xi minus x bar times yi over the sum of xi minus x bar times xi. And we have to ask ourselves, what is random and what is constant in this expectation? And everything that is an x is going to be a constant here, a known constant, in fact. The only thing that's random is the y's. And so I can pull out this, essentially. You have to be very careful here because uh, yi is uh, part of this sum right here, so we can't pull out all the constants. But we're going to get 1 over the sum of xi minus x bar times xi. So that whole equation is a constant. And then we have the sum of xi minus x bar times the expected value of yi. Okay, so once again, just like we saw before, the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected value. But since this part is constant, I can pull it outside the expected value. And now I'm going to use the work that I have just done, and I get this 1 over the sum of xi minus x bar times xi times the sum of xi minus x bar. And you may remember that the expected value of yi is going to be beta naught plus beta 1 xi. And now I need to be very careful about what I do here in terms of keeping track of this. So this right here uh, is a constant. This is a constant. This is a constant. Actually, everything is a constant at this point. We've actually computed the expected value. And it's all about simplifying things. And so I'm going to have beta naught times the sum of xi minus x bar over the sum of xi minus x bar times xi. So I'm just distributing out this sum here. Plus beta 1 times the sum of xi minus x bar times xi over the sum of xi minus x bar times xi. So you can see pretty clearly here that the numerator and the denominator are the same. And so that just becomes a big 1. And then you may be asking yourself, well, how do we get rid of this part right here? Well, in fact, the sum of xi minus x bar is equal to 0. And so this whole thing goes to 0. And so I have 0 plus beta 1 times 1, which equals beta 1. And so I showed, just to be clear here, I showed that the expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. And that means that the estimator must be unbiased. So as a side note here, some of you guys are probably wondering, how in the world would I show that the sum of xi minus x bar was equal to 0? Why is that true? Well, what we have here is we have the sum of xi, so we're going to distribute out this sum, minus the sum of x bar. And you may remember that x bar is just a constant, just a number. And so this becomes the sum of xi minus n x bar. But since x bar is the sample mean. It's just the sum of the x's divided by n. And so this cancels with this. And we get the sum of xi minus the sum of xi, which equals 0. So that's how we know that the sum of the x's minus the mean of the x's, the sample mean of the x's, is equal to 0. So we've shown that the expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. So we have an unbiased estimator for beta 1. Can we do the same thing for beta naught hat? So we want to find the expected value of y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar. That's the estimator for beta naught hat. And we've already shown that the expected value of, well, we, the expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected value. So we get the expected value of y bar minus, and then x bar is just a constant, so we can just pull that out. So x bar minus the expected value of beta 1 hat. And we already showed from our previous work that the expected value of y bar is beta naught plus beta 1 x bar. So beta naught plus beta 1 x bar. 
minus x bar, and we just showed that the expected value of beta 1 hat is beta 1. And so this will cancel with this. We're left with beta 1. I'm sorry, with, we're left with beta naught. And this shows that the expected value of beta naught hat equals beta naught. And so beta naught hat is also an unbiased estimator of beta naught.